This tutorial covers plotting with the X-Array library. The X-Array library, library has an inbuilt plot function that's a thin wrapper around matplotlib. The, doc the documentation of the X-Array plot function is excellent. Read it for an in-depth explanation of the power of the X-Array plotting. This notebook's just enough to cover getting started and making use of plots and subsequent tutorials. As X-Array data arrays contain all the associated metadata and coordinates, for the data, it can create informative plots with very little effort. So, first step, we'll import X-Array. The next step is to use a, a Jupyter Notebook magic function, matplotlib inline. That just causes the matplotlib figures that the plot function creates to be displayed within the notebook. We'll open the same data set as before. It's the X-Array data array object that has a plot method it does not work with X-Ray data set. So to plot the first time step of TAS, we'll use a convenience, define a uh, Python variable called TAS, point it at the data array that's inside the data set, and then we'll, we'll select out a single time slice, the first one, using the iCell, and plot it. Note that we're also specifying size 6. That's just to get a decent size plot that you can see. You can change that number. The default is smaller than this. Operator chaining, well, sorry, I should say, now you can see the, a plot of the first time slice and you can, the plot is as nicely labeled axes, longitude, latitude, with the units, and those are both picked up from the metadata, and also a nice color bar with the variable name and the units. So that's, that's quite a lot already just, just with a simple plot command. Operator chaining means it's possible to have multiple selection operators and add plot to the end to visualize the results. So in the previous notebook we used a cell operator, the cell operators to select out an area of the, of the Indian Ocean including Australia, and I cell to select out a single time slice. So we'll chain those together put plot on the end and create a plot. So you can see we now have a plot. It's got Australia, see Madagascar and Africa, Antarctica. So this is selected out an area and a single time slice, 1850, the first of January in 1850. So X-Ray will automatically guess the type of plot based on the dimensionality of the data being plotted. If it's past too many dimensions, X-Ray will default to displaying a, hi a histogram. So here we pass a time slice, about five years, six years of data, five years of data, and the same area we had before, and the same plot, but now X-Ray doesn't know how to plot that as a map. So it simply makes a histogram of all the values, which is now useful. So we need to reduce the dimensionality enough and it will plot a... So if we reduce the dimensionality enough, it will pot, plot a line. So for example, a time series of near surface temperatures in Brisbane. So as, bef as in the previous tutorial, we'll use cell to select out an area, uh, a single point which is close to Brisbane, and we use the nearest method to make sure that we f find uh, a valid value and we'll use cell and select out a time slice. So the same five years as before above. Note that we've had to use two separate cell operators in this case because the method, the nearest method, is only applies to this selection. But we can chain them together and that's fine. We add plot on the end and now we get a 1D line plot which is a time series of over time there's nice axis labels of near surface air temperature. And you can see the annual the seasonal variation. So that was that again, that was the same command we used before, just dot plot, but X array has guessed that we want a line plot based on the dimensionality dimensionality of the data. So now we'll open a data set from the same collection, but this is air temperature data at all pressure levels. So this is called TA. So again, it's 
an open DAP URL. So we'll open that data. We'll just have a look what it, what it looks like. So it looks very similar to the previous data. Latitude and longitude should be the same. This only has 600 time steps, but also now has the P level. So that's the pressure level. So this is a th this is three-dimensional data set with time. So four dimensions. So if we select out the air temperature data variable, which is here, we can see this one, TA, and we'll save it in a variable called TA. Well, I pointed to it anyway. So TA, there we go, is the air temperature in Kelvin. So if we select out the first time index and the longitude corresponding to the Himalayas, which is like so. That, and again, we use the nearest method. We're using I cell, select out the first time slice. So, and cell to select out a longitude, which is close to the Himalayas. And we'll plot that. I'll come back to some of those options in a moment. So what we're getting now is latitude along the x-axis and pressure level along the y-axis. So this is a slice through this three-dimensional data set for a particular time. And you can see we've used the option y increase equals false. And that's to invert the y-axis as pressure levels as pressure decreases with height, so we want the higher values down the bottom. And so this is the air temperature, and this is going over the Indian Ocean, and then as it hit the, hits the Himalayas, you can see that reflected in the the absence of data at these lower pressure at these high pressures. So this plot was just to show that it's possible to do slices in other dimensions if the data has that dimensionality.